Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to explore what rolling friction is. Imagine you have a wheel that's rolling over a surface. Let's say that could be the wheel of a car rolling over a road, or it could be the wheel of a railroad car that's riding over a railroad tie. And the reason why there's friction, rolling friction, is because typically either the wheel deforms or the surface deforms, or they both deform, so that we have a small segment down here at the bottom where the tire or the wheel is flat. And the distance from the point directly below the, where the axle is, the middle of the center of the axle, to where the tire or wheel no longer touches the surface, that distance, let's call that B. And that is also considered to be the coefficient of rolling friction. Now that's kind of interesting because in this case it's actually a length and it has units in meters. So when we talk about the coefficient of rolling friction, we actually talk about the distance of deformation from the very center of the wheel to where the wheel or the tire is no longer touching the road or the, the surface. Notice that everything else looks familiar. We have the weight of the wheel or the load pushing down on the axle. We have the normal force which is equal to the weight. We have the reaction force, which is caused by the friction, and now we have the friction force pushing this way. Notice that if we add these three together, and knowing that N is equal to W, we can then say that we can add those forces together. We have the weight or the normal force. We have the reaction force. And then we have the force required to overcome friction, which of course is in the opposite direction of the friction force, which is this right here. So this represents the friction force, this represents the reaction force, and this represents the weight. We can draw a second triangle that gives us the dimensions of that triangle, where this is the radius. Well, actually, this would be the radius. So let me draw it again. So this could be representative of the radius of the wheel. This can be representative of B, which represents the coefficient of rolling friction. And then this here, well, that has no specific meaning. That's quite all right. We'll just leave it as that. We know that this angle here, let's call this angle phi. Let's call this angle phi right here. And then we can see the relationship between R and the friction force and the radius and the coefficient of rolling friction along with the angle. Now we're going to use that to come up with an equation that describes the friction force. You can say that based upon this right here, that the friction force can be found by taking the reaction force, R, and multiplying that times the sine of phi. And the sine of phi, since we're always dealing with very small angles, is approximately equal to the tangent of phi, so we can write that R, is a pro the R sine phi is approximately equal to R tangent of phi. And then for small angles, we know that the sine of phi is approximately equal to the tangent of phi, which is approximately equal to phi, so we can say that this is approximately equal to r times phi. If we now multiply and divide that by r over r, r being the radius of the wheel, we're going to say that multiply that times r and divide by r, now we realize that the distance b can be expressed in terms of the radius r and the angle phi. So then we can say that r times phi is really b, which is a coefficient of rolling friction. So this can be written as r times b over little r. So now if we write that equation in a more simple format, we can say that the friction force times the radius of the wheel is equal to the reaction force times the coefficient of rolling friction. Now at this point we're not quite done yet because we may not know what the reaction force is. But if we go back over here, we can see that using Pythagorean theorem that R squared is equal to the weight or the load squared plus the friction force squared. Or R is equal to the square root of that. So what we can do here is, in order to be able to manipulate the equation, we're going to square both sides of that equation and replace r squared by this. So we can say that the friction force squared times the radius of the wheel squared is equal to r squared times b squared. 
Okay, now substituting what we have here into our equation here, we'll get the following. On the left side, we get force friction squared times r squared is equal to, on the right side, we're replacing r squared by this here. So we have the load squared plus the friction force squared multiplied times b squared. Now we want to isolate the friction force squared, so every term where the friction force goes to the left. So we have friction force squared times, so here we have r squared minus, because when we bring this across it becomes negative, minus b squared is equal to omega squared times b squared. And now of course we can take the square root of both sides and solve for the friction force, and so we have the friction force is equal to the load times b divided by the square root of the radius of the wheel squared minus b squared. So now we have an equation that allows us to find the friction force of rolling friction by knowing the load on the wheel. We know the coefficient of rolling friction, which is actually the distance that the tire of the wheel deforms from the central point to where it no longer makes contact divided by the square root of the radius of the wheel squared minus the coefficient of rolling friction squared. And that gives us the equation where we can use to calculate the rolling friction force. And that's how it's done.